Hey guys, welcome back to another OCS video. Today I want to talk about phase two. If you saw my last video, phase one, this is going to be a little bit shorter and more concise than that video was. If you haven't seen that video, you can go check it out. I'll put a link up there. However, this one's going to be geared towards phase two. And also, I just want to say thanks for all your support on that first video. It really means a lot to me that it's helping you guys out and you guys find the information useful. So I hope you enjoy this series as well. So real quick, if you don't know, OCS is broken up into three main sections. There's phase one, which is about two weeks. And then there's a phase two, which is the longest period of OCS. It lasts about 12 months. And then there's a phase three, which is another two week period at the end to kind of wrap it all up and make sure you can pass uh, your field practical exam. So the 12 months about of phase two will be broken up into 12 to 15 weekends. So my first weekend of phase two was a Thursday through Sunday. So it was a four day. Uh, we showed up Thursday night about 1800 had first formation. The mindset is supposed to stay the same for phase two as it was in phase one. In that first drill, it kind of was a little bit, it was pretty strict, but it is a little bit easier because you know you're leaving in a couple days. So it's not quite as bad as phase one. There is still a level of professionalism that is expected, but it is calmer than phase one. So I'm gonna knock out like 12 videos, just going week by week on what you can expect from each drill. Your state could do this in a different order, but all the requirements are the same. Bidding sends out a checklist and all the states have to meet the same check marks. So this is the order that we did it in. Uh, yours might be different, but it will be the same material. So in OCS, there's four or five big tests you have to take and pass. You get one chance to retake it. And if you fail that retake, then you're done. So this first weekend, we started off fast and just hit military history. I'll kind of run through exactly what we did, but it was a lot of military history uh, and not a whole lot of anything else. So what I mean by that is we went on a staff ride. Uh, here, I'll just get into the schedule. So Thursday was first formation. We showed up, we did in processing, a little bit of paperwork. Uh, between 1800 and we were not assigned weapons but this would be the time right when you get there that you'd be assigned your weapon they're going to tell you to get rid of your phones or to put them in a box or to leave them in your car they told us they were going to take ours and they never did so the expectation was just to have them on airplane mode and have them in our lockers or in our backpacks and to not be seen with them that was kind of the expectation is a little bit looser than phase one because at phase one they really took your phone and they kept it so this was a little bit more loose. It's more on the honor system that you're not gonna be on your phone. And they also say you're not allowed to have coffee. So when you're in the DFAC, uh, they'll kind of be watching you. But again, it's on the honor system. You're not supposed to be drinking coffee or soda or anything like that. Not a whole lot happened that first night. After first formation, they kind of do a quick inspection on you. Make sure you have your cat card and uh, different things, different required items. They make sure those are in the correct pockets and your blue book and everything else. But it's it was pretty chill. I don't remember doing a whole lot of push-ups or anything. So you can expect to have fire guard that night and every single night during OCS. In Kansas, our wake up is at 05. Yours will probably be similar. PT lasts for about an hour and then personal hygiene lasts for about 45 minutes or so. After personal hygiene, you'll go into breakfast. After chow, that's when we hit straight into the classroom material for military history. We would just sit in the classroom. We would read slide by slide over the PowerPoint and the PowerPoint, it would last I mean, the entire day and then you go back in there the next day it would last the entire day so every hour you get a break but it's just going around a big circle in the room and this person reads the slides and this person reads the slides so on and so forth for hours and hours and hours uh, you're allowed to stand up uh, you're allowed to walk around the back but you're not allowed to fall asleep that's the big thing is you cannot fall asleep a lot of the information is going to go in one ear and out the other at the beginning you're really trying to take good notes but it gets to the point where there's so much information you don't even know what to take notes on so we had one OC uh, typing on his laptop, taking really good notes, and we all went back later and reviewed those notes instead of everybody taking their own personal notes. But by all means, take your own notes and do what you gotta do to pass the test. So there's gonna be a lot of information, all the way from the French Indian War all the way up till today. You're gonna have a really broad timeline, and it's like I said, it's a lot of information, but we all pass on the first try, and you will too. I'll go back and look for that study guide and link it in the post or in the description down below as well. So along with military history, that first weekend, we also have the, the senior class, the class that was right before you, they graduate. So you need to go set up their graduation. So you take all the monuments and things that sit up on the stage and the flags and all that other stuff. You set it up just to get graduation ready. 
Um, you're kind of like ushers at their graduation, so you walk people to their seats, that type of thing. I was a photographer, so I took pictures throughout the whole event, but it lasts about an hour or so. Somebody comes in and talks, they do a walk across the stage, just a typical graduation, and then you help clean up that venue as well. Total, it's probably two or three hours out of the day that you get a burn, just helping out the senior class, making sure their graduation goes smoothly, and then it's back to the classroom for more military history. That first phase two drill kind of sets the stage for what to expect from there on. As far as PT every morning, your breakfast is same time, seven o'clock every single morning. Your lunch is about 11.30 and dinner is about 1700. That kind of fluctuates depending on what you have going on. But typically those are the times for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Kind of the same as phase one, you don't have a whole lot of time to eat. You have about 20 minutes total and that's start to finish, getting everybody in and everybody out. You'll have somewhere between four and six minutes to eat. The people in leadership are gonna wanna make sure you're hitting the hit times. So they might be in your ear saying, hey, you got two minutes left, you got one minute left, let's go. While I'm kinda on that note, the people that are in leadership will have a few different key tasks is what they call it. While I'm on that leadership topic, I do wanna go over that just a little bit. So you'll have, just like in phase one, you'll have a few different topics that you have to meet in order to get a go. There'll be five of them. And if you, you can miss two, but if like a three out of five is passing, if you only get two out of five, it's a no-go. So as long as you get three out of those five, you get a go. But a couple of those, like PT is always one. Uh, accountability, I think, is one. And then they'll have certain key tasks that pertain to that specific weekend. And like I mentioned earlier, another one of those topics is hit times. If you miss one hit time throughout the entire weekend, uh, you're gonna fail. When you first start out, you'll probably miss a couple hit times because they're designed to be difficult and hard to make. But yeah, that was basically the first week of phase two, the first weekend, even though it was four days, a lot of it was sitting in the classroom, reading PowerPoint, uh, we had the graduation. Other than that, it was business as usual, kind of getting accustomed to what to expect, making sure everybody was in uniforms, uh, getting that SOP kind of started because you'll start an SOP, the standard operating procedure for everything. So your locker set up, how your bunk's gonna be made, uh, what pocket your blue book goes in, where your cat card goes, all that stuff will be put in an SOP. So you'll have an opportunity to start designing that SOP to make sure everybody's on the same page moving forward into the next weekends. Yeah, guys, that's the first week of phase two. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out in the comments. Also, I'll put the link to the picture uh, in the description below. You can go through and see exactly what time, exactly the hit times, and how much time you have between events and things like that. It might be helpful to you guys. Anyway, guys, I hope this is somewhat helpful to you. Uh, I'll be making a video for each week of phase two as we go along. So keep an eye out for those, and I'll see you next time.